Yeah, good evening YouTube. So in an earlier video I showed this DVB Link TV server software. I showed the version 5.5 and I have this running on my Windows 8 PC and what I've done just recently is I loaded version 6 on my Synology NAS. So you can see it looks almost identical except for the version number here and under sources it's pretty much the same thing since this is running on my network attached storage device of course i can't access my pci tuner card so i only have access to my hd home run network tuner but the setup of the tuner is exactly the same the other difference here because I'm running on the Synology is I only have access to the XML TV data set for your program guide. I don't have the Media Center guide services under your channels. Mostly things are the same. If we go back here, for instance, here's the uh, version 5.5. So here's 5.5. I have my two HD home run tuners and then I had the two PCI card tuners which of course are still in the PC and you can see here I have MC guide services and then the XML TV under channels so this again is the 5.5 you can see you have channel selection which is the same you have the same channels you have the same favorites list and now there's a channel logos section. So I just took the channel icons folder that I used to use on my Kodi system and I copied that over to the Synology and created a channel icons folder with all of my channel icons and here you don't have to match up the names letter for letter like you do in Kodi. You can override and assign any channel to any icon and the neat thing with that is both the favorites list and the logos get pushed out to all your DVB link client programs so you don't have to go to every playback device and configure favorites lists and channel logos lists that's pretty handy one place you manage all your icons all your program guide data, all your favorites lists, and then every client station picks that up, and I'll show you that on my Raspberry Pi. The channel merge is exactly the same. This is where you combine all the instances of different channels. Channel settings, this is where you can come in and rename channels. So I like to clean up some of the cryptic channel names that you get from the over-the-air scan and change them to more closely match what the station calls itself. So if they call themselves KGO, I'll change the name to KGO instead of KGO-DT. And then you have your program guide, which is pretty much the same. You have your TV source. So this is the scanned over-the-air data, so you can use this EIT scanner which is scanned from the broadcast signal itself or I'm using the XML TV data that I used in version 5.5 so that works as well. I may try to uh, load up the PERC data just to get a separate set of data to see if it's any better. I've heard it's supposed to look a little uh, cleaner or have a little richer data set, richer metadata, so I want to check that out. And then under settings, there's a couple of changes. One is they split the general server settings, port numbers and backup and restore, your security or your username and passwords on a separate tab. Then they have a global DLNA, which is your streaming service is a global thing instead of a per client basis. I think you can also set it in the client, but you can also set it in the server now. And then the recorder, they've added this global recorder settings here. So you have where the recordings are stored, when to start, when to stop, 
how to define a new program and your thresholds. And then this is pretty neat right here. You can actually define the pattern of the recorded program. So you can define what the name of the file is. So I have the season and episode dash program name dash program subname. So this will be the name of the series and then this will probably be the episode name. And then I was trying this. I'm actually going to delete these program date and time because that's the recording date and time. And I think that's the same as this date and time. There's program date, program time, and then I guess there's a date and time in one string. But let me show you what that looks like here. Yeah, so here's the recorded TV folder on my Synology NAS, and I've just been recording some series and programs, and you can see how the uh, program names come out pretty nice. You get Gilligan's Island, Dash, and then the episode name. I think this is the date string, so 2016-07-22. This was one where I put in the time and date. So it had 1400 or 2 p.m. Here was one that was recorded at 9.30. But those things aren't really pertinent to the name of the program because you have the date and the time under your uh, directory listing. So that's kind of uninteresting. Unfortunately, this program guide data, the XML TV, doesn't seem to include series and episode because you can see I have season and episode and then program name and then subname but I don't have any season and episode here there's no S1 E1 or anything like that but the uh, nice thing here is you get nice clean recording names they're not super long like let me show you the media center recordings just as an example here Okay, so this is a an example of Windows Media Center recording. So you get the program name, the channel that it was broadcast on, and then the date and the time it was recorded, but you don't get any episode information, you know, the name of the episode, and you have no control over these file names. They're just hard-coded into Windows Media Center. Unless you're using Windows Media Center, it's hard to go through these files and see which one is which. Here's Batman. It was recorded two years ago, and who knows what was on that, that particular night. This is much cleaner. You can control the file name. So that, that's a kind of a neat feature that they put in. So that's in there. Uh, the diagnostics, they have pretty much the same thing. You have your streaming data rate. And then you can also check a particular channel right here. You can just pick a channel and check how the uh, signal is at that particular time. And then here's where you can watch, and you can see there's a channel being recorded right there. Let's see if we can flip up and catch that. 